Hey everyone, this is Mike, and I am here to make a video to show you guys how to make a chain or a ring or some earrings, but we'll start with just a chain today, because it's the easiest. Um, so I, I use GIMP, which is a free program most of you guys probably use. Um, I just started using it and got very familiar with it, so I never switched to Photoshop or anything else. So, I'm going to show you how to do this in GIMP. So, what I have is this basic chain of my, out of my catalog, and I'm going to make a name chain out of it using all of the tricks that I currently use. Um, most of these chains, let's just take a look at the chain for a minute. There's two basic types of chains. You have the old school flat chain meshes, um, which are basically just like a flat plane. This is a 3D style where you're only editing this piece right here this big square piece your pendant which is texture number zero three right here um, unless you're changing you know the color of the actual rope or the bling in the rope you won't touch these at all zero one and two zero is the actual metal around the rope. The zero one is obviously the bling inside each piece and zero two is this clasp piece here. Uh, zero three is your pendant. So we're we're gonna make the texture for this pendant which as you can see it's a square. Um, a lot of 3D chains all work exactly the same way just like this one so once you know how to do this, you can experiment with a whole bunch of different ones. So let's get out of here, and what you want to do is open a new image. If you don't have one open, click New. Um, since most of the things I do are 256 by 256, this is the perfect size for most chain pendants. Um, and most products honestly our, our square textures also so you just want to open a new image now I'm gonna apologize in advance in case I go too fast for you guys because people have told me I go fast even when I'm trying to go slow so when you open it up it's gonna have this plain white background what I do is I just I click this new layer button here and hit enter and I do that a few times just to get a couple layers because I'm gonna need a few layers you uh, you actually you don't really need this layer you want to start transparent but uh, what I do just to save time is I go to color invert just make it black for when we do the opacity later and then I just click the eye so it's not there and I'll show you later what we do with it when we make the opacity. So I'm going to click on the top layer. I'm just going to start there. Open up a text tool. Um, just type my name, because why else would I use someone else's name? OK, so depending on the size of the pendant, you might not want to make it the entire length like this may be the appropriate size for some meshes to have a name this big um, this particular chain the pen is pretty small I mean this is the maximum size that or length that it can be so we're gonna use almost the full length of um, the texture here See, I know I'm already clicking buttons quickly. 
Uh, basically, I'm just I just click the arrow tool so I can move it around, trying to get it as even as possible. Usually, I judge this by how many squares I have on on either side. See, I've got two here, almost two full ones, and just about two full ones here. So this is pretty much centered. One thing about this is um, a lot of texts are pretty not that tall. I guess is is a good way to say. Um, and if I make it just with the size it's at now, it's only gonna be like this big, which people are gonna complain. It's not big enough. <laughs> so uh, what generally what I do, if you have a short font like this, is I use the stretch tool, and I just stretch it down a little bit just to make it a little bit larger. So now that's substantially bigger. Um, one of the things when I started using GIMP, I used to hate this freaking this thing here. Now what this is is this this is the size of the current layer. All you need to do is right click, go to layer, and layer to image size to get rid of that. Okay. Um, this actually is really simple and making making a chain once you know how to do it should not take you more than one or two minutes literally um, the only reason I'm it's taking me a while is because I'm talking a lot so alright now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it up with our bling texture I happen to have a whole bunch that I purchased uh, three years ago, which I can show you how to get those. But uh, this this right here is what I'm going to use, and this is a texture that I just found for free. What I did was I opened up Google, literally type in static, um, go to images, and you can grab one of these and use this as your bling texture. I'm not sure which one I picked, but it's one of it's one of these. Then I opened it up. Oops. I opened it up and I used the brightness and contrast to make it even brighter. Um because people generally like really, really bright stuff. Like it's gotta be even brighter than you think it should be for it to look how people want it in the client. So back here. Okay, so here's here's how we start with this. Um, when someone wants a plain white blingy color, usually they'll say silver or diamond, they'll say. There's no such thing as diamond on a computer. You know, it's pixels. So to get that shiny effect, you've got this static texture. When it moves around, it gives you that really shiny, blingy look to it. So we're going to use this. Okay. Also what I like to do is a trick I just started doing is, first of all, I'm going to invert the color from black to white. Um, the reason for this is because I like to have a very tiny one pixel edge of solid white because it just it really it just makes uh, it makes it look better I'm not really sure why but um, that's what I've been doing lately so to start filling this up first what we do is at least the way I do it is click layer um, transparency and alpha to selection that's going to select everything that's on this layer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this lower I'm going to, so that another layer is above it. The reason for that is it, I'm going to put this inside these letters on a layer um, above. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the selected so that it gives me the white edge that I was just talking about. So what you do is when you have when you have this selected, go to shrink, 
shrink by one pixel. All right, now, if you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the text. That's because it's one pixel smaller. So now we click on this layer, and we're going to fill it with this texture. Now the way that we do this is, uh, it's I'm sort of going to do a roundabout way, um, because to actually get the textures in here in a, more easily, what you do is you, you put them inside the bucket fill tool, but that it requires a few steps outside of the program uh, to set that up. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Pattern Fill, which is what we always do. And as you can see, when you click on this, these are all my patterns in here. A lot of these are standard. They come with GIMP, but they're not really good for playing. All these in the middle here are ones that I put in myself and I use for various types of things. But since you guys don't have that yet, I'm, I'm going to show you how to just find a texture on the net and use it. Basically all you have to do is just um, cut the entire texture. Okay. Now it's, it's on your clipboard, which is this top square here on the left. This is your clipboard. See, it says clipboard. So now I can fill... Um, by clicking here with that texture or you could go to fill with pattern but if you have bucket tool, bu bucket tool excuse me selected that's all you have to do is click once okay so then you can go to select none and there we have our first little bit of our blingy diamond texture um, See now, uh, see if I take that away, you see how much that little edge adds to it. But anyway, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge that. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to alpha to selection again to this whole thing here. Now what I do is I usually... I grow usually by one or two pixels and put one little layer of black underneath it. The reason for that is because you need to separate it from you know any other color that you might have after it. But also, um, I started doing a new trick where I put glow on the edge. And uh, I'm going to show you how that works right now. Um, another cool thing about GIMP is anytime you make a mistake or something, all you have to do to go backwards is press Control Z, which I just did. Now you see I have that ants marching again. I can go back all the way to, you know, the first few things that I did. And I can also, if I don't make any changes here, I can do Control Y and I can go forward all the way back to where I was which is really cool because sometimes it's hard to explain how that would be helpful but once you get into this you'll see just how helpful that is okay so I have my one pixel of black here um, I reselected it by by going back before I clicked uh, select none <clears throat> hope you're following this <laughs> So now, after that one pixel of black, I'm going to go another layer down. I'm going to grow two pixels this time. And I'm going to put white and unselect. Now, this doesn't look that great, but here's what we do now. While we still have this layer selected, I'm going to go to blur. And click once. And now, once you do that, you can repeat blur just by clicking control F so usually what I do is I click a couple more times three four five six seven 
So there, I just blurred seven more times. Now you can see it's very blurry. And it's got that glow around the edge. What I also do is I blur this one pixel of black that's around the edge. I just did that. You see how it changes it a little bit. Makes everything softer. Now I used to just stop right here. Actually, I used to not even do the glow at all. And um, I didn't used to blur the black side edge either. And now there's another trick that I started doing, which is... First of all, I'm just going to zoom to make it easier for you guys to see. Um, I'm going to go to the arrow. And I'm going to shift over just the top layer, like one pixel. What that does is it gives us a little bit of depth. You have more black on, on the left side edge than you do on the right. This gives it um, a more realistic look. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge these down. And this is pretty much it. Um, you don't really have to do much more than this. So I'm going to save it. Generally what I like to save it as is, I usually just save it as one. Don't ask me why, just because I'm too lazy to type anything else out. And I save them as PNGs. Okay, to the desktop. There it is. Now for your opacity. Click um, Transparency. Alpha to Selection. Now this whole thing is selected, and then you fill it with white. Now, with the glow, GIMP is a little weird. As you can see, there's some glow outside of this, of these, uh, of this area here. So what I actually do is I invert. <clears throat> I think this is sort of a bug in the program. I invert here and then I click delete. Now did you see how much extra side glow it got rid of? I'll go back just so you can see again. See how much more glow there is there? You click delete. It gets rid of some of the excess glow. Now, remember I said before about the black layer? Just put that back on and you've got the perfect opacity for your necklace. Save that to the desktop. Okay, so this is my my texture, my opacity, and now we're going to take a look at how it came out. Hopefully it looks good, because I just spent a few minutes doing this. I don't want to redo it. Okay. Also, <clears throat> when you do the little glow thing, you have to click blending, or else it will look like shit. Okay, so here we go. And that's what we have. It's not, you know, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, just looking at it, there's a few things that I would change just looking at it. Um, it needs more glow, I think, because you really can't see any. And... The texture is a little bit too blingy. So what I will do is I'll make some adjustments here and I'll show you. See now this is when control Z comes in handy. I can go back to before I collapsed everything and I can make adjustments. I'm going to go to the glow layer. I'm going to duplicate it to add more glow. And I'm going to go to this top layer which is just this here just showing you. I'm going to select everything here, create a new layer on top, put white, and then I'm going to shrink two pixels, then I'm going to delete, unselect, and now what I did was instead of having one pixel around the edge, I have two which is actually going to make it look less blingy. 
So now I'm going to collapse the layers again, merge them down. Save it. Sorry if I'm going too fast. But, um, I've done so many of these. It's just a force of habit. Alpha to selection. I'm doing my opacity. Fill it with white. Select invert. Click delete. That'll shrink down some of the glow. Make the black layer visible. Save it for your opacity. And there we have it. My new texture and my new opacity. So I'm going to put those in and see how it looks. See if it looks better. Okay, here we go. Boom. Not too bad. This isn't really the perfect font or anything, but this looks pretty good, I think. I could also double up the uh, the black layer if underneath if I don't think that that's enough black, which I would just go back like I just did with the Control Z, double up the black layer, see how that added that, and then just save it right here. Throw it in and see how it looks, if it looks better or not. Yeah, actually that does look better. So there you have it. Um, and this this texture, you know, it it's pretty nice. It's pretty shiny, looks pretty good. And I got this right off Google. So you don't really have to buy any textures, you can just use those. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the textures that I have just to see how much different it looks. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to select the layer under the, see now this is, uh, this top layer here is the two pixels of white. So I'm selecting the layer underneath, which is all of the bling. I'm going to put one of my other blings in. Now this is a glitter that has, uh, it's shinier in the middle. It looks actually nicer than the one I got on Google, so if you want to find out how to get that, just ask me. Um, and I'll show you how this texture looks. There you go. Not too bad, looks pretty nice to me. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you wanted to make a uh, color, you could literally just use, uh, there's another texture I have which is basically the same as this, but darker, because it's better for making colors out of, you can't really make a good color out of something this bright. So if you were to do a color, now you can see the, the two pixels of white. Basically, you could fill it with any one of those textures, even the one that I had over here before, this one. Which, uh, see how dark it was before I made it bright? You could use this. Um, and you can just go to Colors, Colorize. And literally just make it any color you want make it red, um, you know, blue, green, all these wonderful colors. And let's say you wanted a really, like, neon green. You can, you can uh, change the color, then you can go to contrast, brightness and contrast, and you can make it just, like, pop super super green here so that's just uh, another example um, and that's pretty much it those are my new little tricks um, anyone can do this I mean I'll show you I'll go back and I'll show you just how quickly it would be to make a necklace if someone ordered it and I wasn't trying to go slow. Okay, I'm getting rid of those. 
Let's say the person's name was... Sally. <laughs> I just randomly picked that. Girls order a lot more change than guys. And they like uh, cursive script fonts. So here's a good one that I use a lot. Blessed Day. Now the reason I use this a lot is something that a lot of people who start making change don't understand which is, should they should because it's pretty simple to understand is you know take a look at this uh, chain again see how it's attached here okay now if you have all lowercase um, letters right if you had an M I K E, you might have the top of the K here, and you could make it appear that it's hanging from the clasp with the K. But let's say their name was, you know, something where there was a capital over here, and then a few lowercase here. Um, that's not going to work because it's going to look, you're going to have a huge gap here where there's nothing to attach it to. Okay, because this is attaching in the center of the texture right up here. Okay, actually, right here. See how, see down here, it says it's telling you, um, right over here, it's telling you where you're at pixel wise. 128 is exactly the center of the texture. This is where the clasp for the chain is going to be, right here. So, this font is perfect because it's it slants forward on an angle here, sideways. If you tried to do this with another script that didn't lean forward like that, it wouldn't be possible. For instance, here's, here's one. Now this one, yeah, this, you're not going to be able to use this because... If you make this the right size, your clasp is going to be right here. So when you put this on, this whole area here is going to be empty. And it's going to appear like it's floating. Alright. Um, so that's why I use this. Because with this S, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this text here and inch it a little bit closer to the S just to make it fit even better so sometimes you have to make these adjustments to make a chain look perfect okay so I'm gonna go a little bit faster now remember what I said before uh, drag it downwards make it a little bit bigger okay invert to white uh, alpha to selection get a layer above shrink it by I'm gonna do one this time shrink by one pixel put in my texture which I'm gonna use my bright shiny glitter texture boom merge it down unselect okay I'm actually going to brighten it up a little bit because this is not, people want it even brighter like I was saying before. They want it like that. Alright, reselect everything here. I'm going to grow by one pixel. Do black. And grow by two pixels and do white for my glow. I'm going to blur my glow. One, two, three, four, five, six times. I'm going to blur my black once, shift the top layer over around one pixel, boom. Now you have that depth, looks really nice. Merge everything down, layer to image size just so that it's nice and clean, doesn't bother me. Save it, do my opacity, fill with white. Select invert, get rid of the excess glow, 
add on the uh, the black underneath for the opacity. Save. And let's see how this one came out. Boom. Looks pretty good. Looks really good. Yeah. But you know what? I don't see enough glow. I want more glow. So I'm going to go back. And instead of deleting the excess glow, I'm just going to leave it in. And see how that looks instead. Pretty good. I like that little... You see that you can see that little glowy edge there. Now, um, another thing is, do you see this little speck right here? When you're doing your opacity, if you have any on the on the very edge, like the pixels at the very top here, see how this is this is white up here? You have to get rid of that because what it does is. I'm not sure why, but it winds up showing up down here, um, which is what this little speck right here is. You can barely see it, but you don't want to leave that in. So what I do is I just take a triangle, I try and select one pixel, the very minimum, delete, just to make sure that that is totally black there. Save it. Put it back on. Okay, and now that spec is gone. And now you have a perfect name chain here. And if you can make them like this, people will pay you four or five thousand for these all day long. Um, I used to make like anywhere between 20 and 50 of these things a day. It was insane. I mean, it didn't happen overnight. It took me a long time to get a client base of orders like that coming in but I don't do it anymore I totally got burned out I did like 15,000 of these things literally I'm not even joking um, and I recently told people I'm retiring I don't want to do them anymore I still do them if people ask me because um, people don't like when you say no you know that's another thing once you get customers that are loyal to you, they don't want to go to someone else. Even if you don't want to do the stuff, they'll beg you. And they'll, you know, if you say, oh, I, I have this friend that does them just as good as me, I taught them, they will look at you like you're crazy. They'll be like, no, no, you're making my shit. <laughs> they will not let you um, not make their stuff. So... You can make some pretty good, you know, credits that you can use for whatever. Use use them instead of buying them. Use them to um, to sell them to a reseller. Make a couple extra bucks doing it as a part-time job. Like literally, you can do that if you dedicate the time to it. But anyway, it's enough about that. So this is this turned out to be a pretty long video. I thought it was going to be a lot shorter. But you know, please I I beg you to use my derivables. Okay. This is the chain here that I used. Um I have in the front or the back rather of my catalog here. is where I have, see these are all the, the customs that I've done I have to scroll back to show you and that's after I slowed down and this is my second account too so most of them were on my other account I won't tell you what happened to that account <laughs> all I can say is don't don't make custom items with questionable things on them particularly drugs you will get banned very quickly for doing anything with drugs I, I tell people this all the time they don't want to believe me 
you're going to get disabled. I mean, it's a matter of time. If you have stuff with drugs on it, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's marijuana, that's what I got in trouble for a couple times. And, uh, like, I had a chain that, I, that someone asked me to make with Tupac on it. And he wanted a wheat, uh, marijuana leaf behind him. And I made it. And before it was even in the catalog, it got flagged and I got disabled. Like, I don't know how it happened. You could barely even tell it was a pot leaf. Like, literally, it was ridiculous. So, I'm just going to say, be careful. Um, you don't want to have to start over. So, anyway, I've got my, you know, my earrings. I have all these different chains. These are the short ones. I have uh, the long ones. Got some of the knuckle rings which they work exactly the same way. I'll do another video for those. Got all my wedding rings. Um, these are some of my longer chains. What else? Some of this stuff is just, it didn't even do well, so I just hit it. These things, eh, they're not that great. Some more rings, some more BS. Uh, alright, here we get to some of the other chains, um, all sorts of chains, like dog tags, uh, Cuban links, what else do we got, um, like bullet, bullet chains, just the round diamond chains, those are pretty nice, very gangsterish. um, some short, like, really dainty chains for, for the ladies. All sorts of stuff. You should check it out. Um, I would appreciate it if you derived from me for showing you how to do this wonderful stuff. Cut me in a little bit on your profits. <laughs> and, um... I will make you a couple more videos. But for now, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and uh, check for my other videos. See you guys later.